today's tutorial was suggested by NextEnt4. He suggested that I make a stackable inventory system like it, same way as in Minecraft. So I, I had a lot of fun designing this tutorial. It's, it's a little bit complicated, but um, if you can understand this, it's, it's a very good programming base. Also, one more thing before I start is this is going to be in two parts. So in this part, I'm just going to show you how to set the inventory system out, which might be, might be all you need. But in the next one, I'm going to show you how to add stuff to the inventory and take away some of the inventory. And the way I'm going to add them is so that it, it will align to the furthest left box as possible. So that's all. So first off, we're going to load our sprites. I just copied sprites from Minecraft for the fun of it. So I've got five items right here, so I just copied them. So just add them on, name them accordingly. Alright, once you get five, five sprites added, you can, we're going to create a box which is going to represent one, one slot in our inventory um, list. So I'm call SPR slot, edit sprite, edit some image. I'm just going to make a gradient uh, brown and orange. Oh, whoops. There we go. So that's our individual slot. Alright, so once you finish your slot, you create one more. This could be called SPR null. When we start drawing the sprites, on, we're going to end up drawing these on top of our slot, and if we don't want anything to be drawn on there, we use the null sprite, which is just going to be nothing. Okay. Now the way I'm going to make this game is I'm going to have five slots. So I'm going to create an individual object for each slot. So I'm going to call first an OBJ slot 0. And in the creation, I can put down create a variable and call it index. I said equal to zero because that's what the name of this slot is. Like slot zero. And then we assign it the sprite. So you'll find out later why that's important, but for now, that's how it works. So we're going to create five of these, so it's going to go all the way up to OBJ slot four. And um, we're going to change the index accordingly. Once you've created our five slots, we can create one more slot object. I'm just simply call it obj slot. This is um, going to be a parent object, so we'll go into each one of these and set its parent as obj slot. So if, if you don't know anything about parent, how that works, is that what we're going to do is we're going to code stuff in here, and all the code that's in here is going to be these, these other objects are going to inherit the code from this parent object, so it may, it's pretty logical really. And the reason we're doing this is that we don't want to copy the same code over and over again each of these, so we're just going to do it once in this object. What we're eventually going to do is we're going to code drawing the items on top of the slots in, in this object, but we, we're not quite at that point yet. So now we're going to create another object called object control. We're basically going to initialize all of the variables necessary for um, a stackable inventory in this event. So right now, first we're going to create an array for the sprites. So um, let me give you a basic array tutorial. So if you make an array, it's like any other variable. So let's say you make a variable, variable equal 1. So there you go, you have variable equals 1. So let's say I make an array, which is basically a variable, only the difference is you yeah, put these brackets around it. And it's the square-ish brackets, I don't know if you can see it, not, not the pointed brackets. And then you put a number between it. So this, this works the same way. I can also create array and with the brackets and put one and then it equals one. And same way as any other variable. Only I can make other variables, say array two, set it equal to three, array four, set it equal to, oh, let's not take a step. Three, set it equal to five, let's say. So, but what, what the, the main difference in this array is, is that you can have another variable and put it within these brackets. So, let's say we take variable 1. If we take array variable, this 
would equal 1 because variable equals 1 and array 1 equals 1. So if we change this to let's say 2, then this would equal 3 because you plug in 2 with the array, you get 3. So that, that's basic array tutorial. So now we're going to create an array that will store all of our sprites. So we're going to call the array sprites. And the first one, we're going to go with 0. This is what we want when there's no sprite. We don't want anything drawn on there. So we're going to use SPR null that we created earlier. And next one, doesn't really matter what order. So I'm just going to create one for each of them. Okay, so I've got all our sprites stored in here. This isn't going to make any sense now, but for now, just understand that if I uh, have a variable, say, index and equal to 4, and so if I call up sprites index, that will give me SPR X. Then I can, and later on, I'll, I'll be able to have a variable, and, and I'll say index equals 1 or something like that, and I could call the sprites by having an index variable. That's what we want to do with this, so make sure you understand that. All right, next we're going to create another array and this array is going to be called what we call multi-dimensional array so I'm going to probably uh, put up a drawing being painted in that right now of how this this normal array will look like and now I'm going to show you a multi-dimensional array multi-dimensional multi array is more like a grid rather than just a single line of value so um, go back to our array tutorial so, multi-dimensional array is an array within an array, and if you look at it in a grid, it makes a lot more sense, so I'm not even going to try to explain it. Alright, so we're going to call this array inventory, or IMV. So, it's multi-dimensional, so the two values. The first value is going to represent which slot we're using. Remember, we have five slots, so it, can, it would be 0, 1, 2... 3, 4 would be the ones that we would be using for the first number. And the second one represents 0 is which weapon, which we're going to be using the index numbers that we've used here, or which tool, I guess. And then 1 would be which, how many uh, are going to be stacked in that slot. So, for instance, if we say 0, 0, and it said equal to 1, this means that in slot 0, the weapon would equal 1, or, and if we look in sprites, that is SPR pick. So if we say slot 0, 1, or inventory 0, 1, that would be slot 0, how many of the object in that slot, and let's say 5. So now, with this code, we'll have, we have slot 0 with 5 picks. That's how we're going to set this up. So I can fill in a few more arbitrarily. So I could say 2, 0, so in the second slot, or it's supposed to be the third one because zero is first, and that's that's just a little bit of a logic thing. So we can say sec a third third second slot index zero or the weapon. We can say four, which would be the same as SPR X, and then we can say I and V two comma one. We want three axes, then I and V slot number four. So comma zero, which item 1 equal 5, so that's SPR ho, and INV 4 comma 1, let's say we only want one, one of those. Okay, so now, make sure you understand what I'm doing here with the inventory. Um, it'll become, hopefully, it'll become a little bit easier to understand once we get, get it drawn and everything, but for now, make sure you understand this. Okay. I go OBJ slot, and we're going to now. Once we're in here, now we're going to code the actually drawing based on the array, multi-dimensional array IMV. We're going to draw the sprites on top of the slot to show um, how much we have of each thing. So, go in draw event, and one thing you gotta know about draw event is that whenever you go in draw event, it clears everything. So you need to redraw the sprite, so we're going to code that in right now, so draw a sprite, try to on draw whatever whatever sprite we have, so that sprite index, which image index do we want to have, whatever image index is, and where do we want to be drawn, at x, y. Alright, so now we're going to draw the tool, so we're going to, on top of it, say draw a sprite, 
which sprite. Okay, so we're going to look up the index of our particular slot. So, we're going to go in control.inv. This is the array we made earlier. So, which slot are we using? Well, if you remember, in the creation of each slot, we created a variable called index. So, in order to call up which slot we want, we are we want to get the sprite from, we're going to say index. So, if it's slot zero, index will equal zero, and be looking up the slot zero values in the multidimensional array. Makes sense. All right. Now, we want to look up the sprite. So, one is the quantity, and zero is which sprite. So, we're going to say zero right here. Okay. So now we have the index of the sprite, and we got to put that value within the sprite array to get the to get the sprite. So control dot sprites, and then put the, what the value we get from here, the value you get from this inside the sprites array. So this looks very complicated, but just think it think it through. So this will give us the index of the image that we want, and then we'll put the index inside the sprites array to actually get the image. Okay, so now we have the sprite, and now we see what subjects we want. They each have one subject at zero what x, y want to be the same as our x, y. Okay. Last, we're going to say draw text. Now we want to draw how many of them we have. So what x, y, by, by the way, I'm looking at this right here. I don't have them all memorized, so I'm just looking at here to figure out what I need to put down in there, just so you know. It's a very useful trick. All right, so the first two arguments are x, y, and we're going to add 16 to each part because our slots are 32 by 32 sprites, and our image is a 16 by 16 sprite. So you can think of this part taking up top left corner, and this will put in the bottom right corner, and so we'll add 16 to each of these values. So now the string is going to be the quantity we of the object we have in our slot. So remember, when we put down 0 up here, we found this sprite, and then if we put down the 1, we'll get the quantity. So control.inv index comma one and there you go and that will be our sprite so now if we go into our room and we put all of our slots in you can be, you can be created this and put the slots in random place items put next to each other because that's how it's generally done and it'll be easier to explain and before we leave the room make sure you add the control object because if you don't, none of the variables will be in initiated when we go on. So, before we test it out, let's go over here and look at this again. So, we should have, we should have, um, in slot 0, we should have the sprite index 1, which is a spare pick, and there should be 5 of them. So there should be a picture of a pickaxe, and there should be a number under it saying 5. Same going here. In, the, in slot number two, it should be index four, which is an axe, which should be an image of an axe, and it should say there's three of them. And um, same goes for this one. So let's make sure that that worked. Okay. Okay, so we're back in here. Um, before we get started, I, I just went through a lot of hassle testing things out, and there's a glitch that I haven't covered that will occur. So it's important that we make um, give a value to each slot because if when we're when we're drawing them, them on, when we're drawing everything on, um, if let's say for slot one, it'll try to look up what's supposed to be in slot one and if we don't create it like here I didn't create them, then there'll be a glitch. So I take so right now I'm gonna put down I and B. We're gonna just co cover the slots we haven't, we haven't covered yet, which is one and three. So one, and we're just going to put nothing in, in them. OK, now let's test it out. All right, looks like it's working perfectly. So you can see our sprites, our images are drawn fine. And um, it shows the number of each one we have. And that works good. So um, there's no challenge for this one because it's I'm gonna make a second part to this, and there'll be challenge there. But I want to make sure that you understand how this stuff works. So try messing around with these variables, making it look different, like, and trying to have different stuff in your inventory and different amounts, 
and make sure you understand how to how to modify these numbers in order to change it to your liking. Because that way you'll be able to change it to your liking when when you finish the tutorial and you're using it yourself. So, so yeah, please make sure you understand that before you proceed to the next tour tutorial. You can, as you saw today, or maybe maybe I, uh, I don't know. Um, I got really confused by it. So I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.